first time I'm to India, and I was lucky to be here many times, but I've never been to Bangalore before, and uh, so this is uh, a first, and I'm very excited to be here. What do you think about the G20 preparations by um, uh, Karnataka this time around? Well, I'm, well, what I've seen so far, I'm very impressed, and I find it it's very, very friendly, very well organized, and very um, interesting uh, program that you're offering. What are your plans uh, like in after after the G20 meeting? Do you plan to stay back, or uh, what do you think about the Indian culture and the soft story, soft part of the? Oh, Indian yes. culture? No, so I wish I could stay, but I, I will actually not be able to stay now. But I, I spent a few days uh, before I came here in Delhi and had a chance to, to talk to some of your uh, uh, ministries and so on, and also talk to some uh, uh, research institute. I will come back again in, in, in the spring and again in, in, in June. I will have a chance to hopefully see a little bit more of your culture. Uh, there's so much to see, and every time I come back here, it's very invigorating because in a way, you have all the complexity of the world <laughs> inside India, and, and uh, it's, it's always humbling to, to, to see what you are uh, dealing with and what you are, what you are achieving. Sir, uh, c uh, could you please, you know, uh, uh, I'll deliberate a bit uh, on the thought process of AIIB vis-a-vis -vis G20 uh, functioning, and where do you see the future ahead? Well, first of all, I should say that, you know, India is the most important uh, country of operation for, for AIB. We, we are uh, doing uh, a lot of uh, investment in, in different parts of, of India. So India, of course, and India is also our second largest shareholder, so it's all uh, very important for us. Of course, when we think about uh, G20, you know, we are still uh, a relatively new institution. We are learning to, to work with these international uh, processes. Uh, for us, uh, you know, the, Im the infrastructure, uh, to get infrastructure standards uh, universally uh, adopted is very important because we are trying to make infrastructure an asset class and something that can, uh, where uh, people can, uh, you can get new capital, private capital, institutional capital into infrastructure. And, you know, we need, there's so much to, to do, such a large uh, gap in terms of funding in infrastructure. So many, uh, so much infrastructure has to be put in place over the next 10 and 20 years. Uh, to deal with climate issues, to deal with uh, all the connectivity issues and so on. So that's why these D20's efforts is so important, to get standards in place, to get uh, f new financing in place. And of course, the, em the uh, emphasis now in India on cities, on urban areas, is so important when it comes to infrastructure. Because it's really in cities where everything comes together, or the complexity, but also, you know, where all the speak all the cross-cutting issues come together in cities, and that's where we should try to address. So now it's a question to an economist. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the current global uh, challenges on the uh, fuel crisis side, on the food crisis side, on the fertilizer pricing, uh, the rise in interest rate, as well as the inflation pressures in many parts of the world, uh, where do you see the role uh, uh, of the you know, macro, where do you see the global macroeconomics going forward from here, and do you see any role of infrastructure financing to deal with the current situation? Sir? Well, First of all, we, we, we have what we call a poly crisis, you know, with so many different components, and and this is, you know, this is particularly hitting the emerging and developing world. So, it's a very difficult difficult context, and we, you know, it's infrastructure is probably not the first thing you think about, but uh, we are here to try to protect infrastructure investments, make sure that all these uh, needs that are here are are really uh, addressed and. Yes, it will be a difficult time to, to get uh, infrastructure investment maintained at, at the level. Of course, COVID already yeah. was a hit to infrastructure investment, and particularly in emerging and developing countries. So we need to get that coming back, and it, it was coming back before, particularly before the, the, the war in, in Ukraine. And so we, we need to have a renewed effort to get it, to get it back on, on track. And of course, we need to make efforts to be, get private capital, institutional capital, into infrastructure. Otherwise, uh, we won't be able to address the, the big gaps that are there. Uh, fi my final question to you is just what could be the new model of uh, infrastructure financing when it comes to you know the current challenges? Because uh, you know many uh, uh, less developed nations uh, uh, face this kind of more uh, this kind of challenges in a more severe way uh, than the developed world. So it's 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 a it's a divi divided world, mm -hmm. and I think the solutions uh, would be different for from different part of the world. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right in, in that. And, and 
I think there are some uh, some novel thinking uh, going on, uh, and, and uh, I don't want to. You know, the, you, there are some technical issues, but but there are some I think interesting ideas that you can tie, for example, uh, debt financing now to to climate achievement. So if countries can show that they achieve something for climate, they can get uh, cheaper uh, credit or they can get reduction in, in their debt. I think because so the, because we need to recognize that the emerging and developing world had nothing to do with the climate problem and they need to somehow be compensated and this could be a good way to compensate and, and I think there would be a lot of willingness in uh, advanced countries that really created this problem to use this to because they need to address the climate problem we can use this now to uh, get re debt reduction get cheaper lending maybe get infrastructure in place that helps to address uh, the uh, the uh, climate issues that there are some good models actually Egypt just launched a very interesting model which is you you they get bring together a lot of planned investments on renewables on a platform they uh, also have a program for decommissioning fossil fuels they get some uh, funding from uh, United States concessional finance to help deal with the uh, all the contracts in in the uh, in the fossil fuel uh, uh, sector, the workers and getting them uh, compensation, uh, getting them reskilled and so on. And they also get from Germany some uh, money that is this kind of uh, death against climate achievement. So if you put all this together, I think we can do some really innovative things now to help uh, the emerging developing world to get through this difficult time. Thanks very much uh, for your time, and I hope that the 70, uh, 70 countries which are actually current, currently facing the uh, crisis of this this, uh, this very crucial debt crisis will find some solutions out of this G20 meeting. Thank you very much for your time, Thank for you. this introduction. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, my name is John Tazaluki. I'm, I'm from Brazil. Uh, I'm Under Secretary for uh, International Economic Affairs, and I work directly with the G20. Thanks very much. Uh, is it your first time that you are visiting to India, or uh, how has been the experience? No, no, really, uh, it, it's the second time. Uh, I was here in 2010, and I was able to, to visit uh, New Delhi, uh, Agra, and Jaipur. And, well, it's, it's great to be back. I, I think that uh, India is a fascinating country, and uh, I really hope to to be able to see a little bit more of the country this time. So uh, what do you think about uh, G20 preparations in general? Uh, because you, have, you must have seen many other uh, you know, interactions at this level in many other countries. Oh, well, I, I, I think you're uh, doing very well. Uh, it's, uh, it's been an, an interesting uh, meeting so far. And uh, we are also uh, talking with, uh, with India because uh, Brazil will be uh, We'll, we'll have the presidency of the G20 in 2024. So uh, it's uh, also a great opportunity to, to learn a little bit from, from, the, from your experience. Uh, where do you see uh, the India's potential in terms of growth and investment, so to say, in the near future, sir? Well, I, I, I think that India is uh, one of the greatest uh, examples in, in, in terms of growth, uh, and it has uh, an incredible uh, potential for, uh, for for growth and for uh, investment in in the next year in the next years. I think that uh, the the world uh, looks uh, upon India with uh, a lot of interest. Uh, finally, what are key things that will attract you again to come to India for for your next visit, sir? Well, uh, the the culture it's a uh, country is very uh, is very rich uh, culturally and it, it's very different for for me, you know, from 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 Brazil. It's a completely uh, different world, so uh, and it's very beautiful. So I like it. Very I much. thank you very much, sir. You are also a, you know a prominent uh, uh, voice as far as the developing nations are concerned. I congratulate you for the next uh, you know, presidency and also the Troika uh, that you are going to form with yes. Indonesia and India. Thanks very much for this interaction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm Amit Prothi. I'm the Director General for the Coalition for Disaster Resident Infrastructure. 
It's an international organization set up by India with partnership with 30 other countries and organizations such as the World Bank, ADB, etc. So uh, the questions that we received is for the foreign delegates in terms of how they are like in India, um, why, or what, what are their experience about you know G20 uh, presidency. Uh, what what is your view in general about our G G G20 presidency and and that experience so far? Sure. So interestingly enough, I'm Indian, but I've come back to India after 30 years. So you know, India in itself, th this is the new India for me also. I think G20. I had a chance to be at the Sherpa meeting in Udaipur. Mm -hmm. I've obviously come here. The excitement in the air, I think just seeing the amount of effort the government of India has put in, um, thus just not only to showcase what India has to offer culturally, <coughs> but also with the hospitality, with the seriousness of the discussions. It's actually, I have to say, really, really impressive to see. We have clearly moved into the 21st century, and I, you know, as an Indian who's uh, you know, come back to India after 30 years, it makes me really proud. So uh, resilient, uh, resilience, uh, growth, and you know, uh, the global south are some of the buzzwords that are coming out again and again. Would you like to see, uh, 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 you know, uh, tell us how the global economy is going to be more resilient uh, after this G G20 presidency of India? Sure. So, you know, you have to realize that resiliency is about looking into the future and recognizing that there are certain shocks that we are continuously experiencing. So if you go to the past, you kind of see shock after shock after shock. COVID itself was a shock to the system that has impacted infrastructure. Uh, I come from the infrastructure working group, so infrastructure has really been impacted, whether it's uh, uh, infrastructure related to the tourism industry, et cetera. <coughs> Going forward, I think one has to recognize that these kinds of shocks are not unique. Time and again, our systems experience shocks. So from a resilience point of view, what we need to think about is how do we understand those shocks as we are building our cities of tomorrow. So the working group one, the infrastructure working group's priority on cities of tomorrow re really becomes very important because we need to understand aage kya risks hai, how do we bring those risks into our decision making and how do I make, make our infrastructure resilient for the future. Uh, leaving apart the harder side of the negotiations, there are softer side of uh, you know the uh, this, this, the, this presidency and we are going to project brand India yes. in a beautiful way to the international world. How can we make it more, you know, uh, you know, more beautiful, more attractive for the world? I don't think we can make it more beautiful, more attractive. It's already say, very beautiful and attractive. I think highlighting the diversity that India brings is really important, and you see that. Even the show yesterday was bringing out different, um, you know, even different dance forms from different parts of India. I think continuing that, continuing that by showcasing different kind of food. I was sitting with somebody from Nigeria, and I was really enjoying explaining to her all of the differences in the food this is from Karnataka and I'm a Punjabi coming from the north and yet you know for me also it was a learning experience it was really nice to experience food dance form other kinds of cultural experiences as we go forward hello uh, my name is Ahmed Kuchuk I'm the vice minister of finance of Egypt is this your first visit to India sir if now where are you have to visit India this is my second visit to India my first, first visit was to Mumbai a few years ago, but this is my first visit to this region. How did you find the Indian hospitality from Bengaluru? The hospitality so far has been incredible. Uh, from the warm welcoming at the airport, fantastic welcoming to the all the logistics here, to the cultural events, it's uh, very welcoming and it's very inspiring. How do you look at India's G20 presidency? Egypt is a developing country and we're very proud that India is uh, this year taking the G20, G20 presidency uh, because India uh, will be an excellent representation for developing world, for the emerging markets, for their needs and it will be quite vocal in bringing their uh, priorities and their demands top on the list. So we're very happy, we're very proud that India is leading the G20 this year. Will you be visiting India again uh, for the future meeting? Yes, we are expected to visit India quite regularly this year and hopefully after that as a visitor. How do you look at India as an investment destination? Well, India is well recognized as one of the biggest destinations when it comes to services, when it comes to IT, when it comes to manu manufacturing uh, production facilities. 
So it's already a very uh, internationally known uh, manufacturing hub as well as an IT hub for globally. So uh, it's, it's very well recognized by everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Ibrahim Zaabi from the United Arab Emirates. Sir, is this is your first visit to India? If not, where are you have to visit in India? No, actually, this is not my first time to India. I've been uh, to India many times. Uh, uh, I've been to Kerala, Cochin, Bombay, Delhi. I've been around the I mean very much. I mean, I like India. That's why I come back. I keep coming back. Okay, sir. How did you find Indian hospitality in Bengaluru? Well, uh, they've done a great job. Thanks for that. For the, I mean, for the, for the receiving, the host, uh, the presidency of the G20. I mean. They've done a good job. I mean, thank you for them. And uh, we thank them for that. How do you look at, at India's G20 presidency? Well, uh, I think the agenda is uh, heavy. And uh, India, they can do. They can do it uh, very well. And we will be more than uh, happy to support. I mean, to get this, I mean, and uh, get it done right. And I mean, along with the other partners, I mean, in the, in the G20. Will you be visiting India again for the future meeting? Of course. I mean, I, I, I even keep, I keep coming without, I mean, meetings. I mean, I come even for visiting. So, it's, I mean, right. India is my one of my favorite cities. Right. So, it's, it's, yeah. right. How do you look at India as an investment destination? Uh, India, it's actually, it's been uh, from long time as, a, I mean, uh, investment hub uh, from long time ago. And uh, a lot of people, they keep coming here from long time ago. I even have my family I mean they came here long time ago to do businesses here in uh, in India which is like in the early 50s or uh, 40s I mean they they were here I mean but they were coming by boat to come and uh, I mean uh, do some merchants here in, in India so basically it's a big hub and uh, it, they're doing a good job when you plan to go back are you planning to extend your stay for tourism uh, this time I will not be uh, having much time, I mean, to do a tourism because, I mean, I, I keep coming here. But uh, in, the, in the next time, I mean, definitely, I will be spending more time in Bangalore because, you know, it's my first time here in Bangalore, and I think I should see a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The hospitality in Bangalore has been really exquisite. Well, we got a Yakshagana welcome, and we see Rangoli everywhere. And what's been really very... Uh, wonderful is the tremendous warmth of everybody who's been working to make this event a success, our, our liaison officers, our, everybody else who's helping, just has been, have been incredibly nice and warm hospitality, and I think that's what everybody will take back. How do you look at India's G20 presidency? This is a very important year for the global economy, and having India helm the presidency is very valuable for the world. There are big challenges that need to be addressed, including in ensuring that there is sufficient food security, energy security, making sure that uh, debt levels that are high can be resolved easily. So there are many uh, challenges for the world, and it's very helpful to have India's leadership. And, and how do you look at India as an investment destination? India is a relative bright spot in the global landscape. Uh, we have India projected to grow at 6.8% this year. I know that there is a lot of optimism from the rest of the world about India's growth prospects, and so India is indeed an attractive destination at this point. I think we're Good afternoon. I'm Emmanuel Moulin. I'm the uh, G20 deputy for France. I'm the head of the Treasury in the Ministry of Finance uh, for France. I uh, welcome you, uh, you know, to this India's uh, G20 presidency. So what's your general view about this presidency? And uh, you must have attended uh, other G20 meetings. Uh, uh, how has been the experience so far, sir? Uh, the experience so far is, uh, is, is very good. Uh, we had a very productive two-day meeting. Uh, we, the warmth of the welcome uh, here in uh, Bengaluru uh, was absolutely great. Uh, uh, we enjoyed, uh, 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 you know, very, uh, I think, intensive work sessions, but we also attended cultural events. Uh, and so uh, we see that there is a full mobilization of uh, uh, all the authorities in India 
uh, uh, to make uh, this G20 a success. So do you think that there is something in India which can match the football fever there in France and where you can share what are the two, three things that will attract again you to come to India? Well, it, you know, uh, we, France and India have a very strong relation. Uh, uh, we've been, uh, you know, working together on a number of uh, issues with climate change. We have a strong collaboration on uh, defense, uh, but we also have a lot of uh, investment uh, of French companies uh, in, uh, in India. And uh, we value very much the, the, the presidency of the G20 for, from, from India. We think that uh, we can make a lot of progress in a, in, a, in a difficult environment. The world today is difficult with wars, with uh, increased energy price, with uh, food security in danger. So uh, we think that India, with its particular uh, positioning uh, 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 and with uh, all the investment uh, that uh, India has put in the G20 presidency, can make progress uh, in order to uh, 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 resolve the challenges that are ahead of us. Finally, my fin final question is that this is the very first uh, uh, finance track meeting. Uh, there are 40 meetings lying ahead for the whole year. There are four ministerial meetings. Um, uh, it's very difficult to predict uh, the future, but uh, what's your general view? Where are the negotiations headed from uh, now onwards? It's a bit early to say because we had our really first meeting of deputy in order to set the agenda. Uh, but we, we, we know that, uh, you know, uh, we, heard we have uh, 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 a lot of challenges ahead of us in terms of uh, the global macroeconomic situation of the world, uh, the need to reinforce our, uh, uh, our funding and our, our, our mobilization to help uh, l the most vulnerable countries to deal also with, uh, with climate change and to steer finance toward uh, uh, investment in order to deal with, uh, with climate change, to deal with financial volatility, uh, also, uh, the role of crypto money. Um, so there are a lot of things we are we are working on. Health, also pandemic preparedness, uh, a, a number of issues. Good afternoon. One greeting from Bangalore. In this good opportunity, I would like to extend, as a Indonesia G20 Central Bank deputy, my heartfelt congratulations to the India Ministry of Finance the Reserve Bank of India, and in particular, the people of India in assuming the 2023 G20 presidency. I would like also thanks to the committee, organizer committee, to welcoming us as well as our team into India. India for me has a full of history as well as diversity shaping path of the humanity to the prospect, prosperity, as well as the welfare. India is a country offering a good space for the G20 family in reaffirming the value of the mutualism and how the diversity able to bring the world into a better place for all. I think this is in line as reflected by the team of the G20 initiative. I'm Atul Bagai. I'm the country head of UN Environment Program in India. And we are very fortunate and proud to be part of this whole effort of G20 and India's presidency. And I think for India, it's a very, very unique opportunity to hold the presidency at this very, very critical time of crisis. The triple planetary crisis of climate, nature, and pollution. Uh, at, at this critical juncture, India holding this presidency has a lot of significance. One, for India's environmental leadership. This is a golden opportunity for them to showcase that environmental leadership and also try to steer the G20 platform towards mainstreaming sustainability into the whole developmental network and dialogue. And I think India's main theme has been over the past many years of linking development and environment. And I think G20 provides a golden opportunity and a unique opportunity to showcase that. Uh, it's been a very uh, uh, bitter kind of experience that on such kind of uh, international platform, when you talk about environment, 
a consensus is uh, never built about the countries of a group never comes to a conclusion that this is the consensus on any issue and environment is the very uh, uh, core issue where consensus cannot be built up so do you think that this g20 uh, leadership by india will be able to make a consensus of at least the environment front well you are right to a certain extent that uh, finding consensus on environmental or sustainability issues has been a tough thing for the past few years and climate change being one of the areas where that consensus hasn't been reached but i won't be uh, <coughs> so despair about this because each of the cops of climate change have shown remarkable progress and and there are certain areas and milestones where the countries have agreed yes there are contentious issues where the countries differ because of their national interests but i think the common framework is to see how we can reach a conclusion there have been many cases of consensus on multilateral environmental agreements and i think uh, india's leadership can certainly pave the way for bringing everyone together uh, india is leading by example uh, on the climate change specifically so do you think that india will set an example and other countries of g20 and uh, invited delegates will follow well india certainly has the unique opportunity to show what they are doing on mitigation and adaptation and it's a golden opportunity for them to showcase that and the g20 countries would see through a network of meetings that are being organized as to what are those innovations and experiments that india is doing i'm sure the countries especially the developing countries will find that inspiring and and they would certainly through the south south cooperation look for india supporting them in that regard from a developed country perspective also i think they have to learn a lot from what developing countries are doing and india can provide that experience to them also so well, i'm very happy to be here it's a great opportunity i come from mauritius it's the first time that we are participating in the g20 at the invitation of the government of india so we hope to contribute uh, in the works in the deliberation for india's presidency and we are a small island developing state and we hope that uh, our concerns will be taken on board and we are sure and we are certain of the support of india in doing this thank you very much so we are seeing many problems here in environment today after the covid and all yes so you think this types of meetings uh, resolve the problem of environment in future yes we still have problem and uh, we have pressing issues which remain and which are more accentuated because of the covid and other crises where thank you, see, you. Where you see india in future India is emerging India is emerging as a global power as you know and India is on the rise so more and more strong thank you very much I think this is one of the most important meetings uh, that I ever come and uh, we are very happy and it's an honor to come in here uh, the participation of the uh, different countries is related with uh, sustainable development and cooperation international cooperation and uh, of course there are a lot of priorities uh, a lot of issues and we have a very huge check list to attend and to have a, a result in a short term for the benefit of the of, of our population of our country so we need to have an interchange of experiences to have a better financial support to have a tech transfer and to be uh, on the same uh, goals and the same objectives and especially for the, those countries that they really need it as an immediate response with the support of the uh, countries that they, they can support them and uh, we are coming from mexico in this uh, after the the meeting of last week of the sherpas of g20 in order to put the uh, all the arguments that our ministers uh, will be held here in, in uh, uh, March of the next year to having the final results and to transform our countries with a new public policy in, in this uh, development. India is having to chair this time and it's a uh, facility for India. So how do you uh, see India's role in uh, shaping the future agenda of G20 and what do you expect from India's uh, It's very important because India is is growing up uh, very quick in a very quick uh, way the uh, India is uh, moving uh, in uh, the correct pathway to support and to give uh, uh, new ideas 
and to coordinate the effort of different countries. So uh, I think uh, these uh, goals and these uh, new objectives that the India proposed, uh, one health, one family, one everything, it uh, became to be in a very good moment to share uh, uh, together our experiences and to be as a family. You know, all the countries and India became to be in this particular moment the presidency of this G20 and the, it was the best moment to transform again this group with uh, the effort of all the countries that we are coming here. So we congratulate to be here and, and to congratulate to, to uh, uh, the government of India and the population of India. Environment in general and uh, carbon neutrality and climate change in particular are the things which are very difficult to bring out a consensus upon uh, the issue. So how do you uh, see the sustainable development goal of G20? 2030 yeah. is going to be obtained or some kind of new pathway can be derived from here onwards for the sustainability? Yeah, we, we have to, uh, to discuss more and more and uh, in a consistent way uh, related with the climate change. Of course, in the past, uh, I think we didn't do anything uh, related with the climate change uh, with op uh, in, in a uh, very good opportunity to establish a permanent relation between the, uh, all the countries in, in this issue. So uh, in this uh, present time, I think we are creating a, a new possibilities for 2030. But we, we, we didn't start on time. This is my personal point of view. I think we have to move uh, very fast. Do we still have time? Yes, we have time, but we have to move in a consistent way. So uh, it's not just G20 or COP27. It's the whole population, the whole government in a permanent way. It's not just to, to have a summit, international summit, and to share the experiences for the media or the press. It's to, to work consist in a consistent way every day, all the governments, all the people, looking forward to have results and to create is it possible uh, on a specific chronogram and evaluation and to keep the is effort going every month, every th two months, every three months, because it's going to be very soon that we are going to be in 2030. So what kind of results are we expecting really? And how can you measure that result? So if you're not, if you're not working in a permanent way with a chronogram, commitment, and someone uh, in every task that you're starting it's gonna be uh, a fail time so we need results and we have to be in a consistent way to working all together right now one last question sir. Uh, apart from uh, g20 meeting how do you experience uh, india's hospitality and you being here in india and seeing india's culture before your eyes last evening's dinner and there are so many things lined up to showcase the india's culture and heritage well uh, in in india well uh, we are planning to, to uh, uh, increase and to close our relationship with, between your country and in a specific way with my country, between India and Mexico. We came with our Minister of Foreign Affairs last February and March, the, the last week of, uh, of February, and to, we visit five different cities here and we establish a new relationship and a memorandum, uh, memorandum of understanding with healthcare entrepreneurs, startups, uh, academic and research uh, institution, the CSIR, etc. So we, we've been in a permanent contact with your institutions and your government and the, uh, your prime minister and our president and uh, uh, both ministers of foreign affairs became to be a very, very close, very good friends. So uh, we are going to uh, establish a better and, uh, a relationship and very frequent relationship. That is the reason that I had the privilege to come here again. And next January is going to be another Mexican delegation working here in uh, healthcare uh, projects and uh, with entrepreneur and academic and researchers. So we are very delighted to be in this uh, close participation with India.